Great, so let's get started. My name is Paul Kerchina, and uh, very excited to have uh, you join us today. Um, you know, it's interesting. I've been involved in working with SAP and S4 dating back since 2015 when it first came out. And uh, I was excited it was 2019 uh, where the, what was termed the S4 Manifesto back in the day came out that was a guide for senior leadership and I'll emphasize and enterprise architects on uh, planning their uh, and migrating to S4 HANA. Uh, the guide was updated a couple of years, then it was stopped and uh, was super excited to learn back in early April that uh, it was coming back in a big way um, updated, um, a number of months have been spent, uh, I think since September of uh, last year, and updating the guide. You know, it's interesting, and the guide itself um, is 136 pages long. It's a great guide. And in talking to the authors, I said to the authors, uh, you know, like any book, um, you have to give a guide to the book or have the authors get together to talk about the book. So very pleased that our authors are joining us. And the other thing I recommend to folks as well is even though it's an ebook, you should, like I've done, print out a copy of the guide. You know, print out a copy, nothing works better than letting people leaf through the guide and see what's inside. So my little added tip, um, and I'm sure you'll be inspired by going through this call, um, is basically if there, do one thing after you download it. Print out one copy of the guide. Uh, I think it cost me like 11 bucks at Staples to get it bound up quite easily. And show it to people. It can't be just a link or a PDF. So enough on, on, on my end. Uh, put your questions in the, in the chat as well. well. If we have time, we'll get to some of them or we'll follow up afterwards. Um, but I want to first turn it over to Bjorn and, and Nicholas. Um, and they'll do a bit of introduction among the cells, but most importantly, gentlemen, um, let's get on with the guide to the guide. Thank you so much, Paul. I mean, you did the perfect introduction. So it's kind of very hard for me to, to lift up the bar. Um, very warm welcome from my side to all the audiences. I'm very happy about the opportunity to speak about um, the new guide, you know, was a lot of work. Paul mentioned that already he started really in September um, to update the, bar, uh, the, the guide. And uh, we are very excited to have the opportunity and go through the structure of the guide with you together. Uh, hopefully you find it very beneficial, um, kind of little teaser up front. Uh, we published the guide roughly two weeks ago, and we already have more than 10,000 downloads by now which is three times as fast as the, the previous guide, which of course makes us proud and we received a lot of good feedback. Um, so that is very encouraging to also come up with additional guides for other SAP um, products. Let me quickly introduce um, myself. My name is uh, Bjorn Rimmer. I'm a senior vice president at SAP. I'm working for the customer evolution team. That's a team dedicated, 100% dedicated to our existing customer base. And we try to uh, come up with new asset services tools that help customers with um, transformations towards the latest SAP uh, portfolio. Um, and I'm very happy that you know I have the privilege to speak to all of you on behalf of the entire customer evolution leadership team. My name is Niklas Weidner. I am um, also involved in um, projects related to customer evolution, but I'm also part of a um, team that is um, building tools for the selective data transition. Great. The next hour will be packed with a lot of information about the, um, the new guide. Uh, just a couple of words up front. And number one, we really try to stick to that one hour. You know, we know there might be some people from Europe who are very interested in the European Championship. And I know that the next game is up, I think, at 6 p.m. Central European time. So we try to stay in time. Um, the other thing about the guide, you know, I know it's very difficult to get all your questions answered. You know, we have so many participants. So all the material that we use will be available to you after the meeting. And of course, if you do have some questions, if you read uh, the guide through and you know there are a couple of things that come up to your mind, there's not only an email address within the guide that helps you to get your questions uh, raised, uh, you also find our email addresses and phone numbers at the end of this presentation. So if we can't give you an answer by going through the kind of 
presentation today, uh, please feel free, don't hesitate to drop us a line and we will do our utmost best um, to come back with an answer in a timely manner. The other thing that's important uh, to me, you know, this guide has been written by a lot of folks. So when we talk and go through the entire content, um, keep in mind, we orchestrated, we managed uh, the new version of the guide, but it's uh, really um, kind of the product of hundreds of people within SAP across all board areas who brought in the best practices, who helped us to shape like the new guide. Um, there's involvement from partners and customers who gave us their feedback. And that's, I think, the most important uh, aspect. This guide has been written for customers. So uh, when you go through and you know, we'll talk about that in a minute, you will see that we sometimes uh, go into a lot of detail as we want to make sure that everyone understands um, the context before moving on to the next chapter, really try to write a guide that basically explains important facts and important kind of um, aspects of a project, even to people that haven't started the transformation yet. Other people might be more interested uh, you know, in tools, services, et cetera, for specific phases, of course, we want to address that as well. Uh, but the important thing is, you know, this guide won't answer all the questions, but I think as the perfect um, compendium for knowledge and links, et cetera, um, that helps customers to start to execute and hopefully successfully finish transformations towards s 4 All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Bjorn, for, for setting the stage. So. Let us have a first look at the content of today's session. So we want to start laying out the guidelines that we set ourselves for creating this document and also want to emphasize our motivation and the objective uh, that went into the creation of this new guide. Then uh, Bjorn will talk more about the document history. So where did we come from and what changes um, made into the document? Then we will have a um, deeper look at the structure of the guide and looking at the major chapters that we have. And then if the time allows, we will go over some selected examples and go into um, more kind of a uh, deep dive for certain sub chapters. And then of course, we will uh, wrap it up. And also, as Bjorn already said, provide any um, contact information where you can ask questions or provide feedback. All right, so let's start with the guidelines for the creation. So first of all, we wanted to um, set up this paper um, to be in, in the focus of the technical transition of the application layer towards S4HANA. So we have um, as well equally important topics like program management or organizational change management, but we wanted to focus this tool and uh, sorry, this paper entirely on the um, technical transition, right? Um, with that, we wanted to create a compendium of existing best practices. And as Bjorn already said, we work together with uh, all relevant SAP departments with uh, to, to create this guide here. For that, of course, we wanted to have it as practical and as hands-on as possible. So it should not be perceived as a marketing document in any uh, sort, but this guide should really be um, applicable to the pure execution of a transformation program. And I think we all agree that an s 4 transformation is, is a super complex endeavor. So we try to um, provide as many explanations and links to further information uh, as possible and also providing screenshots and, and custom graphics to have this uh, document as easy to read as possible. Um, we also got a lot of feedback from customers and partners for the old tool that we uh, published back in, in uh, 2019. And we also wanted to make sure to incorporate that feedback in the new version as well. Of course, um, most important guideline for us uh, is to create this new guide in line with SAP's current cloud strategy and also beyond that. So let's have a look at what you can expect from the guide. So as I already said, we wanted to build this as a um, best or as a um, as a summary of best practices for the S4HANA 
um, transformation, but with a technical focus, right? You will see that when we talk about the content. And you can also expect the key success criteria for making your transformation program a, a success. And for that, it was also important for us that you can visit this guide and get information out of it wherever you are in your current transformation stage. So if you're at the very beginning, in, in the mid, or it already started, um, in uh, already started the the implementation program you can always find information and best practices and recommendation from from sap of course um this is no not a replacement for highly individualized services that we are also offering and it is not addressing um complex transition scenarios for for customers that we also have mm. and i think that that we also all agree that an S4HANA transformation program goes way beyond S4HANA as a product, right? So we included also key integrational elements into this guide. For example, uh, we are talking about BTP or integration to um, uh, human experience management. And um, we also plan to address those topics in similar guides that are um, planned for other solution areas going forward. So stay tuned for that and just wait a sec just you know on, on that slide i think one of the things that you mentioned is very important i know that all of you are probably very experienced with sap projects and i know that one document does not fall into the category one size fits all um that is not our intention but what we wanted to ensure is that if you do have a problem or if you do need some some recommendations that you have one document that allows you to find all the important links and all the important blocks that you need to either go deeper into your topic or get into an exchange with uh, experts that can help you with whatever the obstacle might be. Um, so if you see that document as well, this is my, my guidance that helps me to find the next step, helps me to get connected to experts, helps me to find the right information source without being forced uh, to go through, I don't know how many uh, webinars and, and blogs and web pages, then this is exactly what we wanted to achieve. Uh, we know that the level of granularity uh, is always different from discussion to discussion. And of course, as, as Niklas was saying, uh, there's also very complex scenarios where there's no easy answer and um, additional analysis might be needed, but hopefully, you find the official SAP recommendation and the right path towards whatever you're looking for. That's exactly what we had in mind, you know, when creating the new guide. And um, that's actually the perfect bridge to, you know, explain a little bit more about our motivation and, you know, also the object that we had in mind uh, when coming up with a new guide. Some of you may be aware that you know we started with the um, with an, the first version of the guide in 2018, uh, but a lot of things happened since, and I think it's fair to say that the world of IT changes rapidly at the moment. Uh, we see that new trends, innovations come almost quarterly, and they do not talk about generative AI only. Uh, I mean, it might be the perfect example if you see you know what happens from coming up with the first JetGPT version. And now we, we talk about the next um, version, you know, that basically speaks and, you know, feels emotions, etc. So you can actually see that a lot of things are happening uh, at the speed that we've never seen before. But companies still need to run their, their daily tasks, right? And uh, while doing it, they still have to cope with the fact that whatever happens in the market, trends, innovations that could impact their business model. And of course, you know, customer expectations are that you know software vendors software companies help them in dealing with these daily tasks you know that they basically get kind of the support that they are looking for which kind of also imposes a certain pressure on the software vendor side because in order to do that you, you basically need to anticipate you need to think ahead right you have to look at trends you have to look at innovations but you know once an innovation or a trend becomes reality becomes a standard then your solution has to be in place. So you see there, there is our technology trends that you need to account for, their customer expectations. And last but not least, as I said before, the business model disruptions that kind of, you know, are imposed also on the customer side. And I haven't even talked about all the geographical challenges that have to be taken into account as well. And we see that right away. I'm going to talk about 
like uh, the latest conflict between Russia and Ukraine, for example. But of course, you know, there's an impact on supply chains. Uh, we all remember the COVID times, you know, what it did to the worldwide economy. Uh, but we also see like that trends and innovations, like for example, artificial intelligence change entire business models. And, you know, when you kind of break this down, then it's probably fair to say that SAP applies a lot of innovations in the latest product portfolio, but in order to use them, you have to be on this for, or you have to be on uh, the latest uh, release of our products. And that, of course, is something that customers always keep in mind. So how do I get there? So I have like a version, the ERP, S60, I want to go to S4. What's the easiest, the fastest way of doing that? You know, what poses the, the least of risks to my company, to my running business? The second thing that we just have to be aware, changes are inevitable. I know that, you know, very often, even in my experience, I have discussions with some customers at the beginning, show me the value, explain the value journey of S4 HANA to me. You know, we have a great ERP product, you know, does whatever it needs to do. You know, I can actually run my entire business and that might be true. Uh, you know, of course there, it's a great product and you know, a product that grew over years. But as I said before, there are some trends, some innovations in the market and you know one of your competitors will always leverage them which gives them then a competitive advantage so what i always say is certain changes have nothing to do with value they come to the market so the train will leave the station the question is will you board the train or live with the consequences and we have seen that a couple of times again automotive industry perfect example i mean 15 years ago no one would have thought you know, that we now have the, the trend with the e-cars and a lot of other alternative um, innovations within that industry. So technology continues. And I also mentioned AI a couple of times now. Technology continues to change at an increasing pace. And a decade ago, customers that prepared for the next update, the next release upgrade, they always saw these projects as kind of a temporary endeavor. But I think it's fair to say that given the speed of change, customers today have to be prepared that the IT landscape, the work around IT and technology never stops. So it's, it's kind of an ongoing constant effort that customers have to account for. And the partners that support them, I always say they are just as good as the own knowledge transfer the knowledge exchange operation model within the partners. So if you do not keep up with the latest trends, with, if you do not keep up with uh, the latest functions, the latest products, then of course you can't do the best advice towards your customer um, possible. And guidance and transformation therefore is key. That's, that's basically supporting partners, supporting customers and how to manage all these challenges is key today. And that is one of the things where we thought Coming up with a guide that provides all the recommendations, provides all the best practices from an SP perspective, of course, you know, influenced by customers, by partners. Summarizing all the information sources available per phase, per transformation task, um, kind of linking all the information needed to make the next step within a successful transformation project. That will be the first stop, not uh, will be the first step. Not saying that it's the end of what we try to achieve with an SAP. And of course, even here, from a transformation perspective, we are working on uh, also digital guidance. But you know, having such a document in place will be a tremendous help for customers and partners. And as I said before, the feedback we received so far is uh, already evidence uh, of that statement. And. Assuming that hopefully you consider the guide as beneficial and helpful as other customers, we ask you to, of course, help us with the distribution. So the more knowledge about the guide goes into the market, or we just quickly switch to the next slide, um, goes into the market, then of course, you know, the more people can benefit from the content. Um, you see here, you know, we already prepared a statement that just summarizes everything that I explained uh, to you in recent minutes so that you do not have to come up with your own version, but everything that I just explained is part of that statement. Of course, you can leverage and use it uh, for your own organization, for your own network. Uh, we appreciate the support, as I said before. Uh, the more people read the guide, you know, the more, I think, 
potential pitfalls may be avoided. You know, the more traffic, the more networking we become between partners, customers, SAP, and that by the end, of course, will be helpful for all stakeholders involved. Quick jump into the history. Um, by now, uh, you already heard a couple of times that we had one guide in place since 2019. Um, that guide was very, very successful. You know, I just put in the download numbers. You can see that between 2019 and 2022, uh, this guide was downloaded more than 180,000 times. Uh, of course, it's proof that, you know, guidance is important to customers, is important to partners. Um, but by end of 2023, we realized that the guide, although up to the <coughs> basis, um, did not kind of address all the changes in the IT market, plus SAP's strategy, of course, moved on as well. Um, so although we had a guide that explained basically what, what different implementation options were there, tried to explain key decision drivers behind those implementation methods, and there was still a lot of information missing, especially you know, the, the new technology around cloud and also the impact on the operation model that was not part of um, that latest guide. Uh, also, you know, things like um, tools, they continuously develop, they get new functions, um, and the latest guide did not reflect all the changes from recent years. So we decided that just keeping updates year by year would not kind of meet the expectations of our customers and partners, and we decided to uh, completely rewrite um, the guide. So really went into conversations with partners and customers, defined a new agenda, and we will talk about the table of content in a minute, and um, brought in all the best practices, you know, from, from thousands of people, thousands of projects, um, applied the whole cloud and clean core framework, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. And, you know, we'll try to kind of publish the new guide prior to Sapphire, which we managed. I think, you know, Sapphire in Orlando started two weeks ago on Monday, and I think the guide was published the Friday before, so it was um, just in time. And um, let me quickly jump to the next chapter and give you some of the highlights, you know, some of the uh, additions to um, the, the guide, um, things that we have added. Number one, of course, cloud strategy and impact. I talked about it uh, a little bit already. You know, the cloud changes the way how we uh, work with systems, all the, the, the things, all the modern words that you've heard, starting from infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service. We try to basically explain cloud strategy, also explain the impact it has, not only for the project execution uh, or for decisions to be made prior to an execution, but the impact it may have on an operation model during and after the project. Um, You've heard about rise and grow with SAP. So what's the difference? You know, what is within rise with SAP? What is part of grow with SAP? Where do we find additional information links? What are programs underneath of uh, these terms? All of that is now part of the new guide. Very important as it is basically, you know, one fundamental principle behind cloud business, efficient cloud business, the clean core approach. What does that mean? What is the, the impact? You know, what do we have to do from like a highly customized ERP system towards S4HANA that runs on cloud? You know, what are the technologies that I can apply to my program, my project um, to, to prepare the cloud environment for efficient future use? Also the principle behind keywords, tools, services that I can leverage. All of that is part of the new guide. Then of course, cloud ERP and the integration to our um business technology platform you know we know that the business technology platform from sap is basically our key integration layer to all the different sap applications um, we try to kind of dig into the detail give the different aspects uh, different perspectives on btp and how you leverage it you know for, for integrating all the other systems uh, that is part of our guide as well and another major addition that we put into the guide is the level of depth that we put into the selective data transition chapter, right, which is the third implementation method next to our new implementation and system conversion. We also added a couple of new topics into the ingredients to project success chapter. We will talk about that in a minute and also included um, new um, a new uh, tool called SAP Partner Finder. 
uh, with the competency framework to really find uh, the partner that fits best for your uh, transformation. And most importantly, we of course also added all new data transformation tools and descriptions and links to further information for those tools um, into the guide. So let us have a uh, look at the structure of the guide. So the guide is structured in three main chapters. Part one is strategic choices, part two ingredients for project success, and part three essential tools from SAP. And it's important to say that we um, took the customer feedback here and, um, in, in, and, and changed the structure a bit to uh, improve the usability of this new paper, especially in the essential tools from SAP part. And also important to say, if you used the old version of the document already, and if you uh, put the, the link to the sub.com uh, page somewhere, you don't have to change the link. The link remains the same, but you will find the new document under the, the old link. So that's important. And let me just quickly add two more points. Um, number one, you know, and then Niklas mentioned that already, you know, when we came up with a new um, table of content, really listen to, to customers and partners. And based on the previous version, they gave us a lot of information. You know, this is what we missed, or, you know, there's a certain sequence that we could not understand. So we really tried to use customer and partner feedback to define basically the red new storyline, so to say. And the second thing, we know that no one is probably in the mood to read 134 pages just, you know, in one step. And most of the customers, at least that I talk to, they basically tell me I have a specific problem and now I want to find a solution for that specific issue. How can I resolve it? Um, so the document is structured in the way that you can easily find the topic that you're most interested in, be it at the beginning of your project phase, be it at the end, be it about a specific tool, about a specific topic. So everything that you need to know for your tra transition, you can look it up. You can also use like a, a search within the document uh, that will bring you all, bring you to all the chapters, you know, that you have to read. And within the chapter, and that's the important thing, we have the descriptions, the basic descriptions about the topic as such, but also a lot of information about other sources. So if you want to read blogs about certain things, if you want to know where do I find the web pages, where do I find the communities, where do I find additional links that help me to, to kind of dig deeper into the topic, all of that has been consolidated in specific chapters. And that was kind of the main intention. So we not only wanted to improve the usability, of course, that is always uh, priority number one, but secondly, we wanted to make this a compendium that you use whenever the need is there. Of course, you know, if you think it's so entertaining that you want to read everything from uh, page number one till page number 134, happy to hear that. But we also, you know, the truth, you know, sometimes um, you use those guides, you know, there's an obstacle that you can't overcome. And that's what we had in mind as well. All right. So let us have a look at the first um, major chapter, which is the strategic choices. And the first part, as Björn already said, really focuses on the decision needs and the respective consequences that your decisions will have. So if you, for example, uh, choose a certain cloud option or go for a specific uh, aspects of the, the clean core strategy, then this will, of course, change, for example, the uh, key decision drivers for your chosen implementation method, right? So this is very important to, to read through and to get uh, familiar with. Then the second part really focuses on the critical factors for your um, project success. So everything that you have to consider while being in the project. For example, you will learn why it is so important to uh, integrate your customer and vendor master data into the business partner model before doing a system conversion, right? And you will also see what are the main obstacles or the main challenges that you uh, could face during that um, during that process. And or if you, if you want to know, for example, if you, if you have chosen specific um, aspects of the clean core strategy and you want to know how is SAP supporting me in achieving that clean core, then you might want to look at uh, the Rise with SAP methodology where you get uh, detailed descriptions and links to, to further uh, information to help you best with, with the challenges that are coming up there. 
and maybe we stay on this slide for, for just uh, a little bit longer. Um, you may have seen that, you know, you, for example, rice or BTP was mentioned in, in both bubbles. But as you can see, you know, we try to address topics from different perspectives. The first chapter is all about what are key decision drivers, you know, what are important aspects, you know, that support decisions and help you to live with the consequences. And of course, you know, it's important to understand what rise or grow is all about. It's important to understand the basic concepts of integrating your application layers through our uh, platform, as an example, whereby the second part goes into a more granular level. So here we now talk about the ingredients for project success. So it's not only expl uh, explaining what RICE is all about, as an example, right? No, we go to all the details underneath. Like RICE, what does it comprise, basically? What are the different programs underneath? What do we mean when we talk about the RICE Migration Modernization Program? Uh, you know, what are additional information specifically designed for, for RICE? Um, like, you know, how have we changed, for example, Activate, so that it, that all the rules, the templates, the best practice from Activate fit into the overall RICE methodology? That is part of chapter number two. And you see there's also important content that is supposed to accelerate. Um, and I just want to highlight again, everything that's in the guide is already there. So we talk about yearly updates because we know that all our teams are working constantly to either extend existing content or come up with new assets. And the moment a new asset becomes reality, you will see that in our next version um, of the uh, mapping your guide to S4HANA, but everything that's in there right now exists. And I'm pretty sure without getting ahead of myself, you know, in the next version, we may also have an additional chapter for Signavio. We may have an additional chapter for Lina X and maybe even WorkMe. I don't know yet, but so far when we started to make that guide, we wanted to create that hands-on. So the information you find on the guide, they are there. It's not something that we tend to do or that's on our roadmap, no. The things, the description, the links, everything that you see in the guide, um, these are the things that, that are used on customer projects, partner projects, and that we can really kind of, I don't want to say touch, but can apply um, to uh, our transformation journeys. And the second thing that I also want to know, because that's ingredients for project success, just to go in a little bit deeper, you also see now the link, right? We talked about clean core in the first chapter, just to ensure that everyone understands what do we mean when talking about clean core? What do we mean when, when talking about principles for clean core? Now, the second chapter, ingredients for project success, here we go into kind of real rise of management. What do we mean by, by RISET? Like, what do we mean by talking about reports, interfaces, conversion, enhancements, forms, workflows? You know, how will they be affected by the latest technologies? What are tools, services that I can actually apply to kind of live up to the clean core principle? And as I said before, may not be like 100%, and just to be very fair, right? Right now, RISET management always involves manual effort. So we won't give you a solution that helps you to automate a clean core principle for your projects up to 100% because we don't have the tools and services yet. But everything that's already possible will be mentioned in the guide. And again, you can also see that we highlighted some other important aspects for successful projects, even though they might not be entirely linked to the technical level. And as an example, knowledge management, right? So there's a chapter that kind of gives you also some information how we support knowledge management in your organization, uh, where you find also links, you know, that basically talks about um, the, the education portal the SAP offers or additional information, how to get in contact with them. So it's not that we just focused on the technical level, even though it's our focus, we also touched other important ingredients for the project success. And the third chapter, and that's probably one of the most important ones, at least you know, based on my conversations with customers, that's all about the tools. And here we made some some major changes because you know before we wrote the the new um, chapter about tools, we had quite an intense analysis phase with our partners. We tried to understand well, given all the product projects and programs that we run per year, 
And of course, knowing that, you know, bigger customers may have a different approach to certain topics than, let's say, smaller businesses. We try to understand where is all the manual effort, all the complexity, all the, let's say, the obstacles, where are they coming from? Can we kind of link them to certain faces? And this is what you see right here. So we said, okay, let's distinguish between how do I, for example, access information, get information about where am I before talking about the to be. Then, of course, the decision process. How can I use data and system related information uh, to derive the right conclusions? Then the whole part about which algorithm needs to be applied to configurations to, to kind of the data that you have in your older system and what is needed to kind of change that towards the future state of your system landscape. Um, the ETL process at shots, extract, transform, load, and then of course the whole validation verifying process, last but not least orchestrating. You see, you know, all the different steps have been looked at separately. And in order to make it even more kind of practical, practical for customers to use that guide, we also link that to the different implementation methods. Uh, Niklas mentioned them at the beginning. You know, we talked about the new implementation. We talked about conversion. We talked about selective data transition, as mentioned, very first time that we have it here as an official option. And we tried to link tools used to the implementation method and the phase that they bring most uh, of the value. And if we just um, click, just give you some examples. Um, some of you especially the ones that have read the first version um, of the guide are familiar with the tools. Main change here, there are some new tools in there. Again, we talked about selective data transition. Uh, the SAP Business Transformation Center is mentioned the very first time, you know, also a product that we continuously uh, develop and, and add new functions. Uh, we have a chapter in here that also talks about the cloud application management. And you see a lot of other tools that you might be familiar with or tools that have been mentioned in the previous version, but this time we applied more information. As I said before, we summarized a lot of additional information sources so that whenever you either have to make a decision to use a certain tool or you want to know more about the tool, the consequences, the prerequisites, um, the expected outcome, all of that has been summarized again, linked to implementation method, linked to the phase that you're in. Uh, and hopefully you find that um, very ben beneficial. Um, again, most of the tools were mentioned in um, our recent version as well, but you can imagine the previous version released in 2019. Now we're in 2024. A lot of new functions, a lot of new uh, capabilities are available by now. And we tried to reflect that. So the product owners behind all these tools were the main authors behind those chapters. Um, that's just for you. So hopefully, you find it beneficial. One more thing, just in case that some of you may ask, okay, this is all about SAP. Just want to remind you, we also added a complete new chapter about our partners. So every partner that does have a validated solution in place uh, for transformation, uh, for the transformation journey, the guide will tell you, how do I find those partners? How do I find their products? Um, so we really try to provide full transparency. This is not all about SAP only. This is also a lot about uh, partners and their capabilities, as we just have to be very honest. SAP won't have the solution for, for every problem you may encounter, but I'm pretty sure our extensive network, our extensive ecosystem in combination with SAP will always find the solution for the problem. Okay, um, we promised to provide some of the selected examples. And before I do that, again, one more um, reminder. I know this is a lot of content. And I know that, you know, we, we speak probably very fast and, and throw a lot of information over the fence. Don't be afraid. I mean, if you do have the chance to read the, the guide or if you think there's a specific question that comes up to your mind, um, then of course you can always reach out to us. And as I just look into the um, chat, yes, this presentation will be available to all of you after the meeting. Um, as an example here, clean core principle, because it's so essential for the cloud business, 
it's not that we just mention, hey, clean core, you have to do clean core. And these are the principles. No, we try to really go deep into the topic. You know, we try to describe all the different, it's kind of components behind the clean core principle. We describe them in each of um, those different areas then will also kind of uh, be extended by tools, services behind so that you get kind of a basic understanding uh, about the whole topic. Another example um, that I want to refer to, we talked about S4 and the latest innovations. So we not just listed all the innovations per bullet point, we tried to link them um, to the specific SKUs behind S4, specific areas. So all, for example, the innovation that came with a supply chain, they are listed on a supply chain, finance, of course, is separated. And that is probably one of the pages that we have to update at least once a year, um, that's for sure. But you know, we wanted to make sure that the major innovation that that come with us for, and when I talk about major, I also talk about the latest, that you find them consolidated on one page. That's one example. And then a third one that I can um, easily hand over to you. We talked about BTP and that the business technology platform is kind of the main fundament uh, for SAP when it comes to integration. We didn't just you know put in that picture and into the document. And you know, we are kind of very famous to produce uh, good PowerPoints. No, um, we try to make a mix. I mean, like, of course, there's some visual graphics in, in the document, but then you will find detailed explanations about each section that you see on the picture. So when we talk about app development, when we talk about automation, when we talk about integration, we try to explain what we mean by that. We try to explain, you know, what we do behind that. We try to provide information uh, that help you to dig deeper into the topic that you're most interested in. And we also try to give you two or three very specific examples. Like, you know, even though this document is all about S4, when we talk about BTP, there's an excerpt in there where we try to explain, well, that's how integration to, for example, your human resource system can look like. Or that's an example where we try to connect your S4 system with everything that uh, the BTP team offers, including, for example, SAC, like our solution for reporting or data warehouse cloud. All of that has been mentioned in there as well, even though, of course, for those products, uh, this guide is not as detailed as you know for the S4 area. So another very important um, example is <clears throat> or are the implementation methods that we put in and we actually increase the scope of uh, this chapter by a lot. So these three implementation methods together with the key decision criteria uh, is actually 20% of the entire guide so that you really understand what is behind those uh, those three implementation methods and what key decision drivers help me best to choose um, the, the the method that fits best for uh, for my own transformation. Then in part two, ingredients for project success, uh, Bjorn touched it already, we will talk about the power of the SAP ecosystem and how to leverage the SAP Partner Finder, where you can find it, what content it delivers, and how it um, works together with the SAP Partner Competency Framework. Then another important aspect is the, the role-based uh, SAP Fiori UX chapter, where you learn how to uh, set up your Fiori or how to set up your Fiori best and how to do it with a um, role-based approach starting with your uh, transformation program. And then um, talked about that also as well, or we mentioned it, we have a, a chapter about the whole topic of RISEF management. So what are RISEFs? How do I um, deal with them during the project? How are RISEFs um, driving also the project effort? Um, that you have to take into account when, when you're planning uh, a transformation program. So that's um, extremely important. And then that's also a very good example, you know, where we try to link, let's say, the traditional implementation with, you know, the, let's say, new trends. You can see here all the traditional RISEF descriptions have been linked to how do I address them with the latest technology or latest technology applied um, to SAP solution. That's also a very good example. Um, please um, keep in mind, whatever we show you today, 
these are just examples. Of course, you know, the different chapters offer a lot more information than just like the three or six examples that we, we chose for today's session. Uh, but we try to, to kind of emphasize, well, we always bring visual graphics, detailed explanations, and then, of course, a lot of descriptions and then links and uh, sources for additional information. Again, keep in mind that each chapter is uh, more extensive than, you know, what we show you today. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Another or some more examples are uh, how to apply the power of the SAP business technology platform. So in this chapter, you will learn how um, how you set up your or how to leverage the um, enterprise services that, that BTP is offering. Um, then in the Rise with SAP methodology, I mentioned that uh, already, you will learn how to uh, ensure a fitter standard system while also taking into account all uh, the clean core objectives that you have when uh, setting up your new cloud system. And then uh, we have a chapter around uh, how to leverage the new efficiencies of ABAP because um, you, you might be familiar with it already. We have uh, ABAP Cloud, which is the new development model to build um, yeah, more stable apps in, in your new target system. And let's talk about the, the essential SAP tools one more time. Uh, again, I mentioned the importance and you know, all the changes uh, now a couple of minutes ago, but also here, right? Uh, we, we try to kind of give you insights into how does the tool that service look like, then how do I interpret all the information underneath? Uh, we describe how you can actually derive specific conclusions based, of course, on phase, on, on implementation method. Again, Signavi here is, is just one example. And I think I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you know, the moment we released the document, uh, you know, we talked or heard about the new partnership with uh, WalkMe, and I'm pretty sure uh, that we will have additional chapters or more extensive Signavi chapter. And the next version uh, of the guide, plus, of course, Linux functions, I said that before. So if we move on, um, another good example, the readiness check for S4HANA. And here I also want to emphasize, I mean, the readiness check is, is one investment uh, that we continuously um, try to not only improve or continue to try to, to make even bigger. A readiness check is also a tool that covers a lot of other SAP applications by now. So even though, you know, this guide focuses heavily on the readiness check for S4HANA and of course also the readiness check for S4HANA Public Cloud. Um, there's also a blog and link to communities that help you to dig deeper into other functions of the readiness check. For example, like readiness checks specifically developed uh, for the BTP product portfolio or readiness check that goes into the success factor. So if you just want to keep up, you know, with all the changes and, you know, uh, functions also applicable to other um, products from SAP, then you will also find the information in our document. Um, and next one, custom code migration app, again, just as, as one example, we mentioned the importance of Clean Core. That's, of course, where we uh, selected the custom code migration app. You know, what can you do in projects to not only identify uh, obsolete code, but also do some automatic code remediation so that you keep the uh, manual effort uh, at the lowest? All of that is explained um, here. I don't know about your experience, but you know, when we run some analysis with customers and have a system that, you know, is customized over 10, 15 years, millions of code lines in there, very often customers are surprised how many of that uh, code is not used anymore. Like this is another example where we explain why it's so important to really run those tools before you go into uh, the execution. The information here is invaluable and can, of course, decrease the effort and also the cost of projects significantly. And then um, the last examples before we come to the overall summary, Business Transformation Center just mentioned that here is one tool because we haven't mentioned that before helps you also to analyze your data, to make decisions about data to be transformed versus data to be archived or not leveraged any longer. Um, of course, some of the functions from readiness check have been used for the SAP Business Transformation Center, but here also in Sapphire now, um, some scenarios were released that also help you to do an SDT with an official SAP tool 
um, as one option, you know, the partner section will always provide uh, additional tools available to the market so that the, I call it the selective data transformation community um, can be addressed uh, through that document entirely. Next example, um, uh, the technical downtime optimization, of course, important. I mean, almost each customer that I talk to is always concerned about the downtime weekend. And we, we know there are even customers that tell us, well, guys, you know, I can't afford more than two hours. Uh, of course, you know, all the tools and how we basically accommodate uh, these new requirements that has been uh, addressed with a guide as well. And then last but not least, as the final example, given that we are almost on top of the hour, also cloud ALM and also ALM as such, because I know that especially retrofit functions are very important for customers. You know, very often you kind of think a custom development object might be obsolete. You take it out and then in your final integration test, you figure out, oh, wait, there was a dependency that I wasn't aware of. So what is a good approach to bring kind of development objects taken out of the scope back into your uh, final product solution? All of that is addressed and explained in that guide as well. And now that we basically gave you a lot of information and I'm really sorry that we kind of have to squeeze everything into that one hour. So uh, again, as I said before, feel free to reach out to us in case that you missed something. Uh, I tried to, to kind of summarize that in four important points. Number one, the senior IT leadership guide has really been completely revised. Hopefully you have the same impression and we took the customer partner feedback uh, very seriously. Um, so I think that the overall table of um, content shows uh, it's, it's structured a bit differently. Um, the whole importance of cloud strategy, what it means for your SAP application, how it impacts your operation model, that is now uh, insert, inserted as well, including uh, the explanation of what is growth, what is price, and all of that stuff, you know, is part of the document. Selective data transition is now an official third option for, for the implementation. Uh, I know that the old guy talked about greenfield, brownfield only. Now SDT has been covered as well. And then, of course, you know, all the program tool and service descriptions, they are now up to date. Um, just added the, the download link here as well. So one more time. But if you go to the final slide, um, <laughs> you also have a barcode that brings you to um, our guide. So you can download it from there. And I promised you some email addresses. You know, you see it's needless on my email address. So uh, if you do have some additional questions, if you need some additional advice, uh, then feel free to reach out. We are well aware that this uh, hour was packed with information. Again, do not hesitate uh, to come back to us and we'll do our utmost best um, to answer all remaining questions. For that, back to you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, gentlemen. And, and, and thank you so much in terms of, and uh, you know I'm going to ask you back for uh, when you have subsequent updates, right? So you guys can count on that. And I will be as well uh, doing a blog post on the session and, of course, uh, sharing the recording and the presentation. So, I mean, we just have a couple of, of minutes here and there's any, any other questions that our audience might have that you gentlemen want to address or uh, from, from your perspective, because we only have a few minutes here. I checked the chat, as I said before, the write the PowerPoint, as you said, will be provided after the meeting. I also got some information asking about Signavio. So we do have some descriptions about Signavio in there, but yes, for sure. The chapter for Signavio will be um, kind of extended in the next version. Also want to talk about uh, Lina X and then Walkway, as I said before. So this will definitely be a more comprehensive chapter in our next version. But the important thing for us is always, whatever we put into the document has to be there. Yep. So we do not talk about roadmaps. We do not talk about things that might come in the near future. We try to focus on what's already there and how can I apply that to my project, my program, et cetera. So I actually had a question that didn't come through the chat, but it was texted to me by a friend who was on. Um, you guys talk a lot about Rise these days, right? So if I'm yes. a customer who's looking at Rise, how would you advise I utilize this document? I mean, the good thing is, you know, if you just want to have generic information about Rise, you know, we cover that right in the first chapter. Uh, and you you will find all important information links. You know how do I get to the right uh, service web page? How do I find generic information about Rise? Where can I actually find links that help me to dig deeper into Rise? 
all of that has been added to the first chapter. Very easy to read through. I think, you know, we talk about less than two pages, very consolidated with a lot of links and blocks and information that help you to get an overview. If you want to know more and more specific information about, for example, the rice migration modernization program, this has been added to the ingredients for project success because that really touches the um, the execution. And here again, you will find then very specific links that help me to, for example, understand the link between activate and rice, or, you know, give me information about the migration modernization program. All of that is then um, part of chapter two. So we, we try to kind of um, bring it up in respective chapters mm -hmm. based on what exactly, how deep do I want to go? How much information do I want to get? Which phase am I in? Like, you know, customers that may have done the rice deal commercially are more interested in getting okay how do i get the most out of it during uh, my execution then of course chapter two as i said before ingredients uh, for project success will address that customers that maybe kind of customers that are still in that kind of commercial phase of right. the project want to understand what rice is all about or what's the difference to grow all of that that are bombarded with information from outside they just go into the first chapter to get the overview so i'm just going to throw as we close one more thing at both you gentlemen in terms of I'd like to ask speakers in my events basically in a sentence or two what is the one key thing you'd love to take your listener our listeners to take away from today's call like what is your money quote so to speak um, and Nicholas, I'll, I'll start with you. What is your money quote? And so, I, so, so what you mean one quote you, the audience should take away from, from today's session. If there, if there's one thing to walk away from the session today for, for our listeners, what would it be? Yeah. The document is perfect. If you work in or if you have responsibility in IT and are thinking about the transformation towards Asfana. Great. Bjorn? <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, I would say, you know, there's no an S4 uh, transformation guide that puts customers first. Excellent. Thank you. And, and gentlemen, thanks for joining us and thanks for our audience. And uh, you can be sure, I'm, uh, a couple things are going through my head. One in terms of other than that, force multiplying. The, the, the guide and, and, and to make it aware of and plus this presentation. But as a community, as you're working on the next segments of the guide, so to speak, maybe there's an opportunity as a community side to, I'll term it, you know, get some early access by a few when it's sort of in production. Maybe there's a way to get some early crowdsource feedback on some early iterations for our community. Yeah. Thank you. We will do that. Great. Great. Thanks again, gentlemen, and really appreciate you taking the time. I learned a lot. There's a lot to unpack. Um, and by the way, I, I just had one of our speakers at the event here today um, uh, told me he read the entire guide on the plane kind of coming into the, into the event itself. So, But what I'm going to tell people is, one, print out the guide, at least one copy to leave through. is good to, to do that. Also, you know, how do you read a book these days? You ideally listen to a presentation by the authors to talking about the book, and then you dive into the book. Again, Bjorn and Nicholas, uh, thanks so much uh, for your time today and all the efforts you and the rest of the team put into pulling this together. Most appreciated. Thank you for helping us, Paul. Much appreciated. Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Bye now. Bye. Thank you. Bye.